Hey, what's going on everyone? So in this video, we are talking about switch panels for the Tacoma. And in the past, if you have seen my anytime front facing camera setup, uh, there was a, an issue about where to put the switch. So um, we're gonna jump right into that. But first, if this is your first time here, I'm a do it yourselfer. And I like to do things myself, anywhere ranging from installing my own solar system to work on my own truck and other various projects. If you're returning, then welcome back. And uh, let's get right into it. I'll show you what we got going on. So this is my current setup. Normally there's a little cubby right here. I have uh, these three switches for my compressor system. Um, you can get different cubbies for different types of switches. I did have to modify them a little bit for these switches because they don't fit the same. But as you can see right here, I have my front facing and anytime camera. Now my camera is not actually set up to faint face in the front. It's actually in the bed of my truck to help me hook up my gooseneck hitch. Here is the so-called front facing camera. Obviously it's not facing frontwards. It's in the bed of the truck pointing down towards the gooseneck hitch, or where the ball would be. Makes it easier to hook up, and all I gotta do is just flip a switch. It's really nice, I really like it, but I had to remove the switch for my inverter. So I don't have access to use it anymore, and I want access to use it. But this cubby over here is for the tall Toyota switch. Uh, as you can see, both the camera switch and the inverter switch are both the small Toyota switch. So I wanted to find a way that I could incorporate all of this. And uh, I was finally able to get something. So here's what we got. We were finally able to order a custom panel from Miso Customs. I've been uh, waiting to get notified that they were opening up orders for quite a while now. And uh, I think it was January of 2021, they finally opened it up and I was able to get in right away and put in my custom order. This is what we got here. We got five tall switches on top, two small switches on the bottom, the window switch right here, and then the door light right here, or cargo light, whatever you want to call it, right there. There's a, in the bottom of it, there's a little Miso Customs logo. It is 3D printed, which is no big deal. It looks pretty nice. And uh, we're gonna get that installed today. Um, now I did notice something that I didn't don't really care for. If you actually look at this cubby, the lines on the sides are actually really straight. They're up and they're straight up and down. But on this, they're kind of bowed. So they don't follow the exact lines. I don't know how well you can see this right here. But this is the plug that came out of this hole right here. And we can see that there's little gaps on the sides. I don't really care for that, but um, we're out of options. So I think it'll look just fine. It'll probably be fine once I get it installed, so. I have the panel loose, I have this piece out, and now the challenging part is taking care of this because there are air lines that go into the back side of the switches as, long, as well as wires. So I have to uh, disconnect those. Um, unfortunately, the air lines probably have to be cut and then pushed back on because they're probably too stretched out and like, so if I try to get them off and then just try to push them back on, I'll probably have air leaks, so. So in order to get these switches to fit in this pocket, which I think was for normal, the uh, normal tall Toyota switches, I had to take a Dremel and I had to Dremel it out in order to get the switches to fit. So I'm gonna have to do the same thing to this one in order to get these switches to fit in these pockets. After 30 minutes of Dremeling, I was able to fit the switches in there, and that's what it looks like. While I'm at it, I went ahead and wired up some of these disconnects 
That way I don't have to cut and splice if I need to remove it again. I shouldn't need to, but just in case. So I got the quick disconnects wired up on the inside here. This goes to the compressor, this goes to the ground. And I use these quick disconnects. I just snatched these up on Amazon there. It's a hundred pieces and ranging in gauge sizes. Uh, if you want, I could put a link to these in the description and they work great with these crimpers and I can put a link to these in the description as well if you are interested. And now we're ready to put this back in. It should just snap into the existing hole. It's a pretty tight fit, but that's not a bad thing. Just made it a little challenging to get it in. So I went to go put this back together and realized because I have five holes here that it won't go back together. There are pieces of plastic on the inside here that uh, I'm gonna have to cut in order to put this back in because of the switches that would go on the ends here. It doesn't allow it to go back up. So that's what I'm gonna do real quick. Now it's cut out and that wasn't very hard. I just used a hacksaw blade and just held it with my hand and cut it out and uh, it should fit now. So here is the finished product. This is what it looks like all finished up. It did take a little bit of finessing in order to get it in there. I had to cut some notches out of the backside in order to get those additional switches to fit in there. But as you can see, now we can fit some more switches in. On the bottom row, we got our cargo light switch, our rear window slider switch, the front and rear camera switch. I can actually turn those on at any time, which is not the front, obviously. It's in the bed of the truck. And the inverter switch. Then on the top row, we got the three compressor switches that I had to modify, the sockets I had to modify in order to fit those in. And the switch right here on the left is a little sneak peek of uh, an upcoming video in the future. Then I got uh, one more pocket on the right that I can use to fit something else in. If I really wanted to in order to fit other switches in, then I have seen split switches. So in the place of these tall switches, it would actually be two switches. So I could actually put two here and then I could put two here. But uh, at the moment, I don't have anything else that I want to plug in. Maybe I'll put in some exterior lights. I'm not sure yet. But as of right now, that is my setup. So I did do a video on the front facing camera. There was actually a couple of them. Um, one of them, I was trying to figure out what to do with that switch. Uh, another one was the actual install. And I also did another video using my GoPro as a backup camera. It was kind of, it worked okay when I was camping because I didn't have Wi-Fi to connect to, but when I was at home, my phone constantly wanted to connect to the Wi-Fi at home. So it didn't really work very good when I was hooking up at home. Um, that's more to do with the settings in my phone and I think a Samsung thing, but uh, this was easier anyway, rather than setting up the GoPro and kind of fighting with the connectivity. All I have to do is just flip a switch and be able to back up to the trailer. It's nice and quick and easy. And I'm happy that I was able to organize the switches in a better way. So I guess it does it for this video. I will catch you guys on the next one.